All right. So now that I've gone over everything else and how to make the calls and how the extensions work and how the ring groups work, now we're going to go over the voicemail and call recording interface. So I placed a test phone call within the company, within the company, which is the two half phones sitting on my desk over here. And now I want to listen to both the recording of the call and then I also want to hear the voicemail that I left for, for, the, uh, for the boss from the receptionist or from the receptionist for the boss. Either way, I forget. So let's take a look and see. So we're going to go over here to the PBX interface, and we're going to set up the user accounts so that people can log in and see their voicemails. Again, if they want to check it by clicking, by uh, hitting star 97 or star 98, they're welcome to do that. That's, In my opinion, that's an absolutely miserable way to get people to check their voicemail. And it's a great way to ensure that people don't check their voicemail. If you make it easy, then maybe they'll check their voicemail. So I go to admin and then I go user management down here. And once I get here, you might find something a little familiar. So you'll, you'll notice that for every single extension that we created, it also created a user. So for every extension, it's created a user. And this is something that wasn't in free PBX when I set up my phone system for my store in 2011, but they have this new interface for it now. So let's click on receptionist and boss. So the first thing you have to do is click on receptionist and choose a password for that person. So I'm going to choose the same boring password I've been using this entire time. Now, what you can do here is you can set what that person is allowed to see. So, you know, are they allowed to see, let's say, a call history? Are they allowed to see their voicemails? Are they allowed to see that stuff over here? You can set up what they're allowed to see. And you can also set up, can they see, the, can they see call recordings for each individual user? So I can make it so that the boss can see the call recordings and the voicemails for every user. I can make it so the user can't even see their own call recordings, but I can see their, and manage their call recordings. There's all sorts of stuff you can do here, and you have to be careful careful with how you set this up. So let's say you have your receptionist is having a bad day and they say and they say a bunch of racist slurs to somebody. You, you you may not want them to be able to log into the PBX and delete their call recording of them saying all those racist slurs. You may want that so that you can see that they did that. You may not want call recording at all. And if you don't want call recording, you recall as I was scrolling down earlier, every single time you get to one of these little Anytime you get to one of these little dialog boxes over here, let me just show you. I'll just show you on the trunk page. You can simply set it to uh, not record. Actually, I, I'm uh, that was my mistake. I wouldn't say on the trunk page. You can set it, let's say, on the inbound route page. You can say call recording, and you can set call recording to never, so that it never records. You can see the same thing on the ring groups. You can do the same things on the extensions. But here, I want to show you that how call recording would work if that's a feature that you'd actually want to use. So we're going to go over that here. So I'm going to set up that person's password, and I'm going to set this up so that they can only see their own voicemails, but they cannot see their own call recordings. Again, the reason for this is I, we don't want to set this up to where a user or where an employee can delete the call recording. So if they say something fucked up, if they say something they're not supposed to, they can't simply log in and delete their own stuff. So we're going to update this. And then for the boss, I'm going to set the boss to be able to see everything for every user. And then I, and as you can see, they're all down here. So it's saying what they're allowed to see. Can you see call recordings? Can you see voicemails? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm also going to set his password so that it's a password that, that I can log in with. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to hit update down here. And after I hit update, remember, I've not submitted yet. I have to hit that big red apply config button at the top. Now, once that's done, I can click User Control Panel. I'm going to open that new tab. And once I'm at the User Control Panel, it's going to ask for my username and my password. My username here is going to be the username that I had set, let's say 101. And the password is going to be the password that I had just set. So the username is going to be the extension. Now, remember, this person can see voicemails. They can see their voicemails, but they can't see their call recordings. Now, if I log in as the boss, I'll be able to see voicemail and call recording. And you can actually see it by, you can see the call history, the call recordings, and also you can see the voicemails by every single one of these, um, by every single one of the, um, of the users. So I can see that I can click here and I have call recording from receptionist. So I can click play here. And neither of them has an answer to the feedback. But as you can see, as you can see, it's not going to play the phone call. See, and I'm playing back my phone call. Now the same thing. Th 
Now, if I want to hear a voicemail, let me just leave a voicemail because I think I actually didn't. I thought I left a voicemail, but apparently I didn't. So let me leave a voicemail for the boss right now. So I'm going to call the boss. Actually, it would be more interesting if I called, if I had the boss call the receptionist because I want to show you that this will work even when you're logged into somebody else's account. So let's leave a, re a voicemail for the receptionist. Yeah, here, here, here's the funny thing. I actually thought I had left the voicemail. Check it out. I never hung up. So I have been leaving a voicemail for the past 12 minutes and 48 seconds. Great. Might as well end that call. And now that'll be a finished voicemail. So let's go over here, and you'll see that this actually updated itself in real time. See how it shows a voicemail for the receptionist? This is not a static interface. This is not an interface that's not ch that um, you, know, you load it and you have to hit refresh to see something. This is actually constantly updating itself, which is a total rewrite from the old system. I wasn't even aware of this. So now the boss can listen to that voicemail. So I can hit play over here. See that? Says miss call boss. So now and it's and it sounds like crap because it's a recording of me talking into a phone played back through speakers and then uh, listened to by a microphone, but you get the idea that it worked. Now, if I sign out over here and I go over to the receptionist's login, I'll show you that the receptionist will be able to see the voicemail. See, it says voicemail one. Now, it's going to show up as a new voicemail for them because they haven't clicked and checked it yet. So we can click the voicemail. You can hit play to play it. You can download it. You can trash it. All sorts of cool stuff you can do. Let's put, I'm putting the volume up. So this visual voicemail system again, it's a nice, it's a nice modern feature to offer people. If you have, if you're setting up a new phone system, you can set them up with the option to go star 97, star 98, and again go through the whole prompts of you have six new messages. First message from. Kathleen at January first. I was like, by the again, when I listen to that, it's just shut the fuck up and get to the point. I can't. I I, I don't want to spend forty seconds to listen to a ten second message. So if you set up something like this, it's more likely that people are actually going to check the messages because you've made it easy. And again, the call recording interface is very easy to use. It's very easy to find. It's actually searchable. So let's say somebody calls and says, "You said that you would do this." You can say, "Please hold," and then you can search for their call recording. You could play it back and you could say, ah, oh, crap, I did say that. And you go, yeah, you're right. Or you could say, wait, I said the exact opposite of that. Then you could pick up the phone and go, no, we didn't. And they'll go, yes, you did. And you can go, no, we didn't. And then they'll go, okay, yeah, you're probably right. And again, the call recording, by the way, if you're setting up call recording, look up the laws in your state. This differs from state to state. There are states that are two-party states, meaning both parties need to know that they're being recorded from the beginning of the phone call. And then there are states that are one-party states, meaning only one party needs to know that they're, the phone call is being recorded. So in a one-party state, I would need to let my employees know that they are being recorded. However, they don't need to let the person on the other line know that they're being recorded. In a two-party state, it is actually illegal to record the conversation if the, uh, if the other person doesn't know that the recording is taking place. So you need to ask a real attorney. Before you click any of those buttons over there, you need to not listen to me. You need to find a real attorney and ask him, what am I allowed to do? If you have not consulted with an attorney and asked them, what am I allowed to do in my geographic area? then hit never on every single one of those call recording buttons that you see. Hit never, 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 because you don't want to be breaking the law by setting up your own PBX system just because the default functionality may allow for call recording. You have to look that up. In terms of voicemail, obviously, there's not going to be a lot of legal mumbo-jumbo with that. Just don't, uh, don't make your voicemails public and you're fine. And again, set secure passwords for these things. Make sure that your password is not 1234. I set up 1234 as the password for a lot of these extensions just because I know if I set the password to 1234 and I'm doing a video, I don't have to think about it, remember it, write it down or anything. Set a secure password to that so not, you know, any random jackass can't log in and check your voicemail and call recordings. And that's about that.